In this PowerPoint, we'll continue our discussion of chemical quantities and composition by looking at how to use the concept of the mole to do molar conversions for compounds. In order to do these conversions with compounds, we do have to introduce a new concept, formula mass. Formula mass is simply the combined mass of the atoms in one unit of the formula. It's in units of AMU, the same as the average atomic masses from the periodic table that we use in the calculation. So let's look at an example. We're going to look at chloroform. This is the molecular formula for chloroform, CHCl3. We also have a ball and stick model representing how those bonds between carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine all form. Now, in order to calculate the formula mass, I simply have to use the periodic table masses for each atom present in the molecule and actually add those together. So I have one carbon atom in that molecule. I multiply it by the periodic table mass, the average atomic mass in AMU for carbon, 12.01. Then I add to that my one hydrogen atom multiplied by its average atomic mass. And I add to that my three chlorine atoms multiplied it by the average atomic mass for chlorine from the periodic table, 35.45. So I add all of those numbers together to get my final formula mass of 119.37 AMU. So just a word on vocabulary. When we're dealing with covalently bonded compounds, we can also refer to formula mass as molecular mass because it actually refers to the mass, or it indicates the mass of one individual molecule. This isn't the case for ionic compounds. For an ionic compound, that formula actually only represents the smallest formula unit for that large crystal lattice, not a molecule. So for molecular substances, we can call it molecular mass, but for ionic com compounds, this has to be referred to as formula mass. Now formula mass for compounds can be used in our molar conversions in the same way that we use periodic table mass for the elements. One mole of any compound is simply equal to the formula mass in units of grams. On the particle side, one mole is also equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or formula units of that compound. So let's do a conversion from grams to moles for a compound sucrose, which has the formula C12H22O11. As with any problem, we figure out what we're given first, which is 25 grams of sucrose. And we're also given the formula for sucrose, which is important for this type of problem. Next, we need to know our final units. So we look at what we're being asked for, and it's how many moles of sucrose. So that's our final unit. We need an equivalent statement that relates moles to grams. And we know that for compounds, one mole of any substance equals the formula mass of that substance in units of grams. So we have to calculate the formula mass. That's the first thing. So we do 12 carbons from our formula times 12.01, the periodic table mass of carbon. Now notice that I'm using units of grams per mole because I'm actually calculating molar mass. It's the same calculation as formula mass, it's just different units. We add to that our 22 hydrogen times the periodic table mass of hydrogen, 1.008, and we add 11 times 16 grams per mole for the oxygen. And that gives us 342.30 for our molar mass. And here's that stated in terms of an equivalence. One mole of sucrose equals 342.3 grams. Now, to do our unit conversion, it's just the same as we've been doing all along. Start with the number that we're given, 25 grams. We're going to set up our conversion factor so grams cancel out, which means that we have to put the molar mass with units of grams on the bottom. Grams will cancel out. We want to get moles, so the other half of the equivalent statement goes on top, one mole. We multiply through on top, divide by the number on bottom, so 25 times 1 divided by 342.3 gives us 0 0.07304 moles of sucrose. To round to an appropriate decimal place, we look back at our initial measurement, 25. We have two significant figures there which means our final answer should be rounded to two significant figures. 
So we round that number to 0 0.073 moles of sucrose. We can also convert to number of molecules of compound. Here we want to figure out how many butane molecules are contained in 9.213 grams of the compound, and butane has a formula of C4H10. So we define our given as 9.213 grams, and we're trying to find number of molecules. So that's our final unit. We need both of our molar equivalences now. So First, the mass, one mole equals that formula mass of butane. So we calculate the formula mass here, and we set that equal to one mole. One mole equals 58.12 grams of butane. We're also gonna need the Avogadro's number equivalents. One mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And we use the unit molecules, of course, because we're dealing with a molecular compound, C4H10. OK, now we set up our conversion, starting with our given number, 9.213 grams. We want to cancel out grams, so we're going to use the first equivalence for the first conversion factor, and we're going to put the gram term on the bottom, 58.12 grams, and the mole term on top, our grams are going to cancel out. Next, we want to cancel out the moles and get molecules for our final unit. So we use the Avogadro number equivalents, but this time we put the mole on the bottom and we put molecules on top, and our mole term will cancel out. We multiply through by everything on top, we divide by everything on bottom, so 9.213 grams divided by 58.12 grams times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules gives us 9.54589 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. And of course, to round this to an appropriate decimal place, we simply look at our initial number again. It's got four significant figures. We have to round our final answer to four significant figures. In this case, 9.5458 rounds up to 9.546 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of butane. What if we wanted to take this one step further? We know the number of butane molecules in the substance, but what if I really needed to know how many hydrogen atoms were in those molecules? It turns out that the formula itself tells us the relationship we need to solve this problem. According to the molecular formula, for every one molecule, one unit of the formula, I have 10 atoms of hydrogen, straight from those subscripts of that formula. So we can use the formula itself as one last conversion factor to figure out how many atoms of an individual element I have within those molecules. So for example, I can take my endpoint, my number of molecules, and I can multiply it by one last conversion factor made from the subscripts of the formula. 9.546 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of butane times 10 atoms of hydrogen from its subscript in the formula for every one unit of the formula, one molecule. And that gives me 9.546 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. So in summary, in a previous PowerPoint, we learned that for elements, we could convert between grams of any element to the number of moles or number of atoms of that element using our two equivalences based upon the mole. For compounds, we've learned that we can also use those equivalences just modified so that one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or formula units for a compound. And it also equals the formula mass for that compound, just in units of grams. And if we need to, 
we can also use the compound formula as an additional conversion factor. The subscripts in a compound formula tell us the number of atoms of each element in one molecule or formula unit of the compound, so we can carry our calculations one step further and figure out the number of atoms of a particular element within a given sample of a compound.